All right. I think it's uh, 635, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, uh, we could just wait for uh, those who are joining and then um, see if they have any uh, question or what they missed. You can speed up uh, to catch them into the process. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Nasser and I am the outreach coordinator for um, Metro F Line. I've been with Metro Transit for about two years now. And I am a leading person for the Metro F Line, engaging communities and involving uh, public and making sure that we communicate with public about the project and uh, seeking feedback that is needed for this project. Uh, today, we're so excited to share with you the progress um, about Metro F Line uh, bus rapid transit project. Uh, at this point, we are um, seeking public feedback um, for the Metro Transit for the Metro F Line. The proposed uh, station location and other project information are detailed in the Metro F Line corridor draft plan, uh, which is available online. And you can uh, explore that uh, on the Metro F Line uh, project website and provide us your feedback. Uh, in addition to any question or um, comments so, you know, submitted tonight, today, we encourage you to share your uh, input uh, by reviewing the plan and completing online survey, which are both available on Metro F Line website, pro uh, project website. Um, we will be sharing more information tonight. And with that being said, and uh, Jack will walk through how you can uh, give us feedback and how you can uh, provide your comments on the specific uh, segments or a station location or general uh, project uh, itself. So Jack, go ahead and take it over. Thank you, Nasser. Um, I'm going to introduce a a few folks from the F-Line project who are on the call today. My name is uh, Jake Knight. I'm a senior planner in the Arterial BRT group here at Metro Transit, and I am leading the planning phase of the F-Line. I'll introduce my, or pass it on to my colleague, Frank. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Frank Alarcon, and I'm the overall project manager for the F-Line project. Good evening. Uh, my name is Yumi Nagaoka. Sorry about that. We've been there. Sorry about those technical difficulties. OK, um, that was weird. <laughs> uh, my name is Yumi and I work in the uh, community outreach department within Metro Transit. I'm kind of overseeing the engagement activities that our agency um, has for various projects. Great, thank you, Yumi. Thank you, Frank and Nasser. Uh, these are the folks who will be um, answering your questions and, and addressing your comments um, and who are working on the F-Line. A few house items. So our agenda today, um, we've got some uh, logistics to go through, but uh, shortly we'll be starting a presentation uh, about the F-Line project and uh, our draft corridor plan. And then we have uh, plenty of time saved for questions and answers uh, from approximately 7 to, to 8 p.m. Uh, just a, a notice for everyone on the call that this meeting is being recorded uh, and it will be available on our project website um, in the coming days. The F-Line project website is listed on the screen here, metrotransit.org slash F-Line project and we'll be sure to share um, that link several times throughout the night. I want to note that uh, closed captioning is available um, on your screen. There should be a bar similar to what's uh, shown here. If you click on the three dots, 
uh, you're able to turn on that uh, captioning feature. If you run into any technical issues uh, during the meeting, uh, type, uh, click on those same three dots and check that your device settings are uh, what you expect them to be. And if you run into any other issues, uh, you can email us at fline at metrotransit.org and we will do our best to um, help you out. Uh, all attendees' microphones and video are disabled uh, at this time, uh, and uh, we will be able to unmute folks uh, as necessary. Tonight, um, is we want to focus on, on hearing your questions and, and providing answers, uh, and encourage you to also submit any comments. Uh, please do so uh, using the chat feature. Again, if you uh, look at the bottom of your screen or top if you're uh, on a mobile device, uh, click on the chat icon indicated here uh, in the orange box, uh, and then you'll be able to um, enter your comment into the chat. Just a, a text entered into the chat can be seen by other uh, attendees of this meeting. If you do uh, need to verbally ask your question and are unable to uh, use the chat feature, we ask that you uh, use the raise hand feature. Uh, and we will uh, then unmute your microphone uh, so you can uh, give us that verbal feedback. We ask that your questions uh, stay relevant to this project. Uh, so we can make sure that we're getting through uh, everyone's uh, everyone's questions. We will address as many uh, submitted questions as we possibly can, and we'll follow up with written responses uh, to all questions asked after uh, this meeting. Tonight, we will be uh, organizing and prioritizing the response to questions so that we can make sure that we're hearing from as many people as possible. Uh, and with that, I am going to uh, start a video of a uh, presentation and we will get back together um, around seven o'clock or so. Uh, to start the Q&A feature or portion of our, of our meeting. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and feel free to uh, enter your comments into the chat uh, at any time. The Metro F line is a bus rapid transit project that will provide fast, frequent, and all day service to a 13 mile corridor from Northtown Transit Center in Blaine to downtown Minneapolis, primarily via University Avenue, Central Avenue, and Nicollet Mall. The F line is a substantial upgrade to the existing Route 10, which is our region's fifth highest ridership bus route. As shown on the map to the right, the F line project will serve 32 stations, each with enhanced features that make uh, riding the bus easier, more comfortable, and more convenient. 25 of the 32 stations will be built by the project. The F-Line is targeted to begin service in 2026. Shown here on the screen is our project schedule. The F-Line was identified in March of 2021 through the Network Next project. Since then, we at Metro Transit have been working with our agency partners to develop proposed station locations that are reflected in our draft corridor plan. We are currently in the corridor planning phase of the F-Line project and seeking community input to establish station locations prior to the engineering phase of the project. The draft corridor plan is available now on our project website through December 5th and is the first of three versions of the corridor plan. 
we'll take input from our public comment period, from our uh, agency partners and from the public at large, and incorporate that into a recommended corridor plan, which we anticipate releasing for a second public comment period in the spring of 2023. We'll take feedback collected during that second public comment period and incorporate it into a final corridor plan anticipated in the summer of 2023. We'll then uh, proceed into the engineering phase of our project, which will last through 2024. Construction would occur in 2025 and 2026, and F-Line service would begin in 2026. I'd like to uh, note here that community engagement uh, while uh, really heightened at this corridor planning phase, will continue throughout the rest of the project uh, through the engineering and construction phases. So we've heard a lot from customers, businesses, and policymakers uh, for the last several years about the need for improved transit service in the Route 10 corridor. Bus service is a critical means of moving people uh, in this corridor and an important piece of the broader transportation network. For example, on Central Avenue, near the intersection uh, with University Avenue, just outside of downtown Minneapolis, buses carry an estimated 23% of corridor uses, users that are traveling in vehicles, but buses make up just 2% of corridor vehicles in that same space. This is an example of how existing service and infrastructure related to transit in the corridor does not meet the demonstrated transportation needs. The F-Line project will provide faster, more reliable, and more attractive bus service to this already high ridership corridor and will improve the transit experience at stops and aboard vehicles. Additionally, the F-Line project will connect Northeast Minneapolis and the Northern suburbs to the broader Metro network of light rail and BRT lines. In doing so, we are creating a transit network that is suitable for a transit oriented lifestyle where folks who cannot or do not want to drive will have low cost option to access the places and opportunities that they need to uh, get to. According to uh, rider surveys completed in 2021, we have a decent picture of who rides uh, the current Route 10. About half of Route 10 riders uh, are people of color. 80% of Route 10 riders report a household income less than $60,000 and about 20% identify as having a disability. Though commuting to work remains an important trip purpose on the Route 10, just 36% of trips on Route 10 are for commuting to work. And about half of those 36% are for commutes during a typical nine to five shift. Before we get too far, I'd like to uh, ground everyone in a shared understanding of what me we at Metro Transit mean by arterial bus rapid transit, or BRT for short. Arterial BRT is a package of transit enhancements that adds up to a faster trip and an improved experience. You can learn more about uh, Metro Transit's BRT lines at metrotransit.org slash BRT. Arterial BRT is designed to be faster, more reliable, and easier to use. Some BRT features include two to three stations uh, per mile to balance access to service while also providing faster trips. Stations are built to include amenities that make waiting more comfortable, including real-time information, heat, and security features, among many others. Riders are asked to prepay for their fares before boarding the bus in order to minimize the time spent uh, at the station. 
BRT service uses higher capacity vehicles and allows for all, all door boarding or boarding through all doors uh, in order again to minimize the time spent uh, stopped at a station. We also work with our agency partners um, to seek bus priority treatments that speed up service. These include changes to traffic signals and the creation of bus only lanes among other elements. Lastly, but certainly not least, arterial BRT is defined by faster service that is more frequent and throughout the day. This is a photo of an existing uh, station on the Metro C line along Penn Avenue in North Minneapolis. F-line stations will look very similar to this uh, and be equipped with features that make transit easier to use, more comfortable, and that contribute to a faster trip. A few notable features. Uh, here we have a pylon marker um, that provides real-time information uh, about when the next bus is expected to arrive. The project will build shelters at each station with light, heat, and additional service information. Stations uh, feature seating, uh, bike racks, as well as security cameras uh, and emergency telephones. Ticket vending machines and fare card readers are present at the station for riders to pay for their trip before boarding the bus. Most stations are designed with platforms uh, with a raised curb. This enables uh, faster and easier boarding for folks with limited mobility, and again, contributes to less time spent at the station and more time moving. The design of individual stations is dependent on the context at uh, specific station locations and is determined uh, during the engineering phase of the project. However, uh, this is a good representation, representation of what a typical F-line station would look like. So the F-line is one of 12 BRT lines that Metro Transit is planning uh, to be in operation by 2030. As I mentioned earlier, the F-line uh, fills the gap in our Metro network by providing uh, access to Northeast Minneapolis and the Northern suburbs uh, while connecting with several other lines in downtown Minneapolis. The F line will connect with the existing Metro Blue and Green Line light rail lines, uh, as well as the existing C line and Orange Line and the planned D line and E line. The D line with service uh, from Brooklyn Center to the Mall of America in Bloomington is opening in just a few weeks on December 3rd. The F-Line was identified uh, through Metro Transit's Network Next project over the course of 2020 and 2021. The process was based on Metropolitan Council policy shaped by historical performance data and attributes of the corridor, as well as community input. Each step in the process was based on four guiding principles. The first, to advance equity and reduce regional racial disparities, to build on success to grow ridership, to design a network that supports a transit-oriented lifestyle, while also ensuring the long-term sustainable growth of the bus network. This corridor was prioritized for near-term implementation through public engagement surveys, uh, and the F-Line alignment was established through a March of 2021 action from the Metropolitan Council. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, on Metro Transit and on uh, transit generally throughout uh, the nation. Unsurprisingly, COVID-19 has had a big, pack, big impact on how people travel, uh, including how they use transit. Metro Transit ridership decreased uh, sharply in March of 2022, but has seen a steady growth on all other modes over the last two years. Uh, this past September saw the highest monthly ridership since the beginning of the pandemic. 
ridership on local routes is about 67% of what it was pre-pandemic. Light rail ridership is about half of pre-pandemic levels. However, BRT ridership is now about even with pre-pandemic levels. As I mentioned earlier, we've been working with our project partner agencies since um, the identification of the F-Line in 2021 to develop um, uh, the project and identify proposed station locations. Our partners include the Metropolitan Council, the Federal Transit Administration, MnDOT, Hennepin and Anoka counties, the cities of Minneapolis, Columbia Heights, Fridley, Hilltop, Spring Lake Park and Blaine, as well as the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. Before we transition to focus on our proposed station locations, I'd like to highlight the collaboration and coordination that we're doing with our agency partners, uh, which is really critical to the success of the F-Line project. We're coordinating the design of the F-Line with several projects from our partners, including MnDOT, uh, counties, and cities. One project that I'd like to highlight that will have an impact on the F-Line is MnDOT's Highway 47 and Highway 65 Planning and Environmental Linkages Study, or PEL study for short. As shown on the map to the right, the F-Line is almost entirely within the PEL study area. MnDOT's PEL study is evaluating broader multimodal alternatives to improve safety and mobility along Highway 47, otherwise known as University Avenue, and Highway 65, or Central Avenue. The Pell study is establishing a vision for these corridors and narrowing a set of feasible alternatives for what the roadway could look like in the future. However, the timing and outcome of the Pell study remains uncertain. Given this, Metro Transit and MnDOT are working closely to ensure that potential future outcomes of the Pell study are supportive of the F-Line project and that the F-Line is compatible with future potential outcomes of the PEL study. To learn more about MnDOT's PEL study, you can visit their project website, which is listed at the bottom of the screen. Now I'd like to focus on our proposed station locations along the Metro F-Line. At this phase in the project, we're asking community to help us plan station locations before we get into that detailed engineering phase of our project. Again, the F-Line will build 25 new stations and serve seven previously selected stations. These previously selected stations include Northtown Transit Center, our Northern Terminal, as well as six stations on the south end of our corridor along Nicollet Mall. The project will make small improvements to these existing facilities at these seven previously selected stations. When proposing station locations as part of the draft corridor plan, uh, we had took into consideration many different factors. Uh, a few of them are here listed on the screen. Spacing, spacing between stations uh, is an important one. Uh, again, our Target initially is two to three stations per mile in order to balance uh, access to the service while also ensuring uh, the bus keeps moving. We look at existing ridership, uh, making sure that uh, we are serving as many Route 10 customers as possible uh, with our uh, proposed station locations. We're thinking about uh, connecting transit service, again, uh, the F-Line as not only an individual line, but also as a part of a network uh, that folks can use to get to where they need to go. Community input is of course uh, very important to this process and is the focus of this phase of the draft corridor plan. We think about land use and access to, nation, to destinations, not only existing, uh, but also planned. 
we want to have stations uh, located at places where people want to be. And down at the individual uh, location level, we're also thinking about street design and available right of way. Here on the screen is a map of the northern half of our corridor. Uh, and I just want to walk through where our proposed stations uh, are located, the cities in which they're located. So we have one station proposed in the city of Blaine, which is our North Town Transit Center, uh, which was, again, previously, previously selected um, as part of the definition of, of the uh, Metro F line alignment. There are two stations uh, on the border of Spring Lake Park. We have nine stations in Fridley. Uh, these are along University Avenue, as well as along 53rd Avenue. We have two stations proposed in the city of Hilltop at 49th Avenue and Central, as well as Central and 45th, and six proposed stations in the city of Columbia Heights. On the south end of our corridor, we have 19 proposed stations in the city of Minneapolis, with Central and 37th Avenue uh, being the border between Minneapolis and Columbia Heights. Again, six of these 19 stations are along Nicollet Mall at 3rd Street, 5th Street, 7th Street, 9th Street, 11th Street, and Alice Rainville Place. These were previously selected uh, locations for the project. So our draft corridor plan is what we are seeking uh, community input on right now through December 5th. The draft corridor plan identifies proposed station locations and is again, an early and important opportunity for community to shape the future of the F-Line project. The draft quarter plan addresses key station location questions, including which intersections will have BRT stations, in which corners of the intersections uh, would platforms be located, and importantly, how are those locations determined? We wanna be very transparent and clear about the considerations uh, that I discussed earlier that go into the proposed station locations. The draft corridor plan uh, proposes platform locations that were developed through site-specific review. And we expect that these concepts will evolve and be refined through the engineering phase of our project and through ongoing coordination with our agency partners. The corridor plan also addresses a few other planning issues. The first being uh, bus priority treatments. Uh, the plan communicates the benefits and identifies opportunities uh, for bus ready treatments so that we can provide that information as inputs into our agency partners' efforts, uh, those agencies being the ones that uh, have control over the roadways and signals on which the, the F-Line will uh, operate within. The plan also addresses uh, local service. The proposed uh, local service uh, is similar in its coverage and patterns uh, as what is existing today on the north end of our corridor, including service similar to that provided uh, by the Route 10N on Central Avenue. There is no uh, local service being proposed on the south end of the corridor, south of Columbia Heights Transit Center or 41st Avenue. Again, so the proposal is for local service to be um, on Central Avenue north of 41st Avenue, uh, and then continue on Central north of 53rd, similar to the 10N branch that exists today. Given that lack of underlying local service south of 41st Avenue, our F-Line station spacing is a little bit tighter, a little bit more close together uh, than we would otherwise uh, propose. So we've been out in community raising awareness about the project uh, over the last several months. And we are currently within our uh, six week public comment period lasting from, which 
began on October 24th and lasts uh, through December 5th. Available right now on our project website is the draft corridor plan full document. Uh, there are station concepts so folks can uh, look at individual stations of most interest to them. And we also have a survey uh, for folks to provide feedback on specific station locations as well as on the project overall. We are trying our best to uh, be out in community as often as possible uh, in order to meet as many Route 10 riders um, as, we, as we can. We're meeting those riders at bus stops and aboard buses. We're out knocking doors and distributing flyers and information to all homes and businesses that are located near proposed platform locations, station locations, I should say. We've sent uh, postcards uh, to all homes and businesses along the corridor. Uh, we're also partnering, partnering with neighborhood, community, and business and advocacy groups uh, to help uh, spread our message and share information about the project and the opportunity to uh, provide comment. So again, we are in the draft corridor plan comment period which lasts through December 5th, and uh, seeking your input to establish the location of F-Line stations. That input will feed into a recommended corridor plan, which will be released for public comment in the spring of 2023. Uh, that feedback will then be incorporated into a final corridor plan uh, for approval by the Metropolitan Council in the summer of 2023. Engineering would occur uh, shortly thereafter and construction uh, would take place in 2025 and 2026. So once again, we're asking your help, you for your help uh, to help us plan F-Line station locations uh, you can review our draft corridor plan and submit comments at our project website uh, where you'll find a survey uh, to provide comment on specific station locations as well as the project more generally. You can email uh, us at fline at metrotransit.org and you can also call my uh, colleague Nasser Musa who is the community outreach coordinator for the F-Line at 651-829 5305 and we encourage everyone to sign up for our F-Line update newsletter which you can find a link to on our project website. So that uh, is the end of our uh, prepared presentation. Um, as I compile my screen here, I'd like to encourage everyone to submit uh, their questions in the chat. And Nasser, once I get this screen up, I will pass it to you. Go ahead. All right, Nasser, do you want to remind us how folks can comment? Yeah, uh, thank you, Jake. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending and thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, please submit your questions in the comments using the chat, as I already posted in uh, the chat. Um, we, we can also, um, if, you, if you want to comment uh, verbally, we can also un unmute you. Um, and uh, as you raise your hand and we'll uh, make sure that we watch for that and then be being able to admit you so that you can speak uh, verbally. Um, what else can we uh, also uh, make sure that the questions are relevant to this project, please. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's very easy to just like a veer off 
the project, but we encourage you to be uh, more relevant to this project. I know there's a lot of projects that are going on that are relevant to this one, um, but as much as possible, uh, just, just want to make sure that we deal with the F line. Um, and we will address uh, as many uh, submitted questions as possible. Um, there might be a possibility that we, you know, um, will follow up with some question in a written form because we need to, uh, we may not be able to, you know, uh, have all information that is needed at this point. We could just uh, collect that information and follow up and address uh, and provide accurate and appropriate information as uh, much as possible. So that is um, what I can say at this point. And please go ahead and submit your uh, questions or we can admit you uh, so that you can ask verbally, as I said. I have a question from Alex. Uh, Alex, do you want to um, uh, admit yourself? We can, we can, we can admit you. Pani is also um, raising her hand. Dick, can you unmute Kani? Yes, I can. Yep. And I will look at other questions. All right, Connie, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Uh, while we work with Connie to um, so while Connie enable is, the microphone, yeah. So while um, while Connie is unmuting herself, and um, Alex had a question that says, "What consideration resulted in the perpendicular stationed configuration at 53rd and University?" Concerning that uh, makes the station unique, bit confusing, and also uh, vulnerable to disruptions. Yeah, I can take that. Okay. Uh, so our proposed station at University and 53rd has platforms that are split across the two roadways. The northbound platform uh, is uh, on University, just north of 53rd Avenue, and the southbound platform is proposed to be on 53rd east of University. They're split across those two roadways uh, in order to be able to make the left turn necessary uh, for a southbound vehicle traveling on University uh, and continuing east on 53rd Avenue. Um, we are unable to make that left turn from University Avenue uh, and still be close to the intersection of 53rd Avenue. Uh, in order to site a platform on university, which would be the ideal situation where we have two platforms on the same roadway. It does result in a, an atypical station, um, but this particular location is um, is challenging in the number of uh, really in the in the activity and, and intersection design. Um, and what is proposed is uh, we think the best solution in order to to meet those uh, various uh, competing interests. So the other question that uh, second question that Alex had, uh, uh, he's asking, is it possible that the number of stations is south of Lowry uh, will be reduced? So that's something we um, uh, certainly want to you know, hear feedback on uh, if if folks um, have that opinion. The number of stations south of Lowry um, results in um, slightly tighter station spacing than, um, than is typical for arterial BRT projects. Um, as you said in the, in the comment, it's closer to a quarter mile spacing uh, outside of downtown. That is the the results of some of the unique characteristics of Route 10 um, and the, 
relatively even demand that we see um, south of, of Lowry in several spots. Uh, additionally, um, the tighter spacing is is part of um, accommodating the lack of underlying local service that is currently proposed as part of uh, um, the service plan for the upline. So uh, uh, local service, so a stop every, um, every block or two, uh, is not being proposed uh, south of 41st Avenue. And so the F-Line will be uh, the primary service uh, on Central Avenue in the corridor south of 41st Avenue. Uh, and as a result, um, our station spacing is, is a little bit tighter to accommodate that. All right, so another question, um, is Metro Transit working with MINDAT regarding the high amount of pedestrian accident at 57th and University Avenue? Is there reason why the southbound stop needs to stay and expand right at the entrance up to 694? Um, I'm going to uh, pull that up. Is Tony's question. Thank you, Tony, for the question. I'm going to pull up um, the plan so everyone can uh, see exactly what, what we're talking about here. Just give me one minute. All right, well, I'm showing here the F-Line project webpage. Um, we can go here to the F-Line stations tab and scroll down to University and 57th. Nasser, I apologize. Would you um, be willing to repeat uh, yes. that question? I can, yes. Um, is Metro Transit working with MINDAT regarding the high amount of pedestrian accident at 57th and the University Avenue. Is there reason, uh, is there reason why the so southbound stop needs to stay and expand right at the entrance to 694? I believe this is referring to uh, the stop right by the uh, 57th and 694. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Tony, for that question. We are working closely with MnDOT um, given you know, to, to look for opportunities uh, to improve safety um, in the University Avenue corridor, as well as the Central Avenue corridor. That is a primary goal of MnDOT's uh, Highway 47 and Highway 65 Pell study, um, planning and environmental linkages study. Uh, so pedestrian safety is top of mind um, when we are, uh, when we uh, propose the current um, platforms and station locations. Um, is there a reason why the southbound platform needs to stay and expand right at the intersection? Um, so the southbound platform is located on the southern part of the intersection, as you state, uh, near the entrance ramps to westbound uh, 694. The reason the platform is located on the southern leg of the intersection is uh, to achieve some speed and reliability benefits that come with a position uh, at that location. So here at a signalized intersection, um, we tend to place our platforms on the far side or through the intersection so that buses uh, don't end up stopping at a light and then having to pass through and stop again in order to serve the platform. We have spoken um, and surveyed our current Route 10 operators, uh, and they do not, um, they have not expressed any concern, concerns uh, in the operations um, at this location currently, which is uh, an existing Route 10 bus stop. Um, with that said, uh, this location uh, will be scrutinized further as we proceed um, with our corridor plan and further into engineering uh, to make sure that that um, that there are no uh, major conflicts at this location between uh, buses merging um, or 
coming in and out of the station with uh, general purpose traffic. All right, so Kani is able to unmute herself now, so I will um, call on uh, Kani to um, go ahead and ask a question, then I will uh, move on to uh, uh, Derek's question. Hi, um, my name is Connie Biscons. I'm a city council member for the city of Columbia Heights. Thank you for pro providing this open house. I have a couple of questions. One, um, at the top of Columbia Heights, we're 53rd in University, where the bus stop's going to be between uh, Target and Medtronic. When you turn left up here, there's that first bus stop. Is that going to be in the same location as the one that, there, that is there now? Or is it further down or further up? Yeah really tell. It's a great question, Connie. So here on the screen, um, mm. we have our proposed platforms okay. on 53rd Avenue. Mm -hmm. And um, so the current bus stops are shown here in with these T symbols. Okay. And so uh, for context, these stops on the right are close to the eastern entrance. Uh, to the target uh, development. Okay. And these stops on the left are at Monroe Street. Okay. Are so you these, aware? Go ahead. Uh, these stops would be consolidated into uh, just uh, stops here at the northbound and southbound platforms. Okay. And you're aware of the roundabout that Fridley and Columbia Heights are going to be placing right at that entrance to target and to kind of go into the property of Medtronic right at the be like right off to the right it's going to be a turnaround not a roundabout turnaround where people when they come out of target at that entrance and exit they're going to have to go to the right go around and then go up to central so is, is that going to be so my question is where would the bus stop fit in that roundabout turnaround yeah that's a great question so we have been working with uh city of fridley and city of columbia heights staff okay. to m make sure that okay. That design is uh, taken into consideration. Yeah, it fits in there, so it doesn't clog up traffic. <laughs> yeah, okay. it doesn't. So. And, okay, so you're already working with them on that. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure. I just I wasn't aware. And then um, I, from what you showed earlier on the map, where the the stations are going, they're going to be going like at uh, 37th, 41st, 45th, and 49th. They'll be at the intersections, not in the middle of the block. Is that? Am I assuming correctly? Correct. Um, okay. Okay. We, I don't believe we have any proposed platforms or stations that aren't um, near an intersection. Okay. And yeah. Because yeah, we don't want. We already have people running across the street to catch the one between 47th and 49th, and uh, so I'm hoping that you know with these new ch these changes here that that will be removed and people will be running, you know, going across intersections instead of running across the road. Oh, exactly. Check that. Okay. Yeah, we don't want anyone to. I I'll just, I was just going to say, we, we certainly don't want to encourage any um, crossing at unsafe locations. And so uh, part of our thinking behind inciting yeah. our platforms is putting them at those safe crossing locations. I'm sorry, I, right. I interrupted you. Okay. And then my third question if I Final question is Central and 37th are planning on putting a concern a little bit because there's a five way intersection at 37th and Central, and you have the railroad line right behind, you know, just a few feet from that intersection. So there's a lot of congestion in there sometimes. So how's that going to work? Between, are you going to put it, you know what I mean? Because it's with five ways. I know MnDOT, and I've been talking to them quite a bit. They're planning on trying to put in a lot of spaces on Central to try to turn it into a main street, actually, instead of. A highway because it's not working to have a highway run through our middle of our downtown. Um, but I'm the five way intersection. I assume that you're working with Mendel to make that as safe as possible for people to cross the road and deal with the congestion that often occurs during rush hour and also when the train's backing everybody up. Uh, yes, we are working closely with Mendot. Um, as you said, they are exploring uh, different alternatives that would uh, slow speeds uh, in mm -hmm. this area or encourage slower speeds in order to increase safety. Yeah. Um, the city of Minneapolis and Columbia Heights are, uh, as you surely know, are working on 37th Avenue reconstruction. Yep. 
and yep. we are coordinating um, our project with um, with that project as well as MinDots. And so um, we certainly are thinking about ways to encourage safe crossings in this area. Yeah. This northbound platform is, um, as you can see, a little further from the intersection of 37th and okay. Central. Um, okay. However, we, we don't have a lot of great options uh, for yeah. citing that platform. Yeah. Um, here in our south. Is there a bus stop there right now? Sorry. At there, 37th and Central, is there a bus stop there now? There is, yes. There's um, okay. a northbound stop uh, here, and I I believe uh, someone uh, on the team can, can correct me. I believe the southbound stop is at the same location. So I had I had noticed um, when I traveled there through there a lot. So um, okay, that's all I have. And thanks again for having this open house to get input on this BRT. Appreciate it. Look forward to having it come through our city. Thank you. Of course, thank you. All right. So move on to this uh, the following question from Derek. Uh, for the northbound central and the Spring Street stop, any consideration for moving it? to far side location and removing the slip, the slip lane. I like the plan to remove the slip lane on the north side location and on the near side location, but removing both the slip lanes would enhance the safety and the pedestrian experience. Yeah, so the, the current northbound um, platform is on the near side or just south of the intersection with Spring. And um, as you said, as part of this proposed concept, we are working with the city uh, property owners and businesses along Third Avenue to explore potential closure of that Third Avenue slip lane. Um, for you know, a variety of reasons, we think uh, that would be an improvement uh, for, as you said, pedestrian safety and creating a more welcoming environment. Uh, it also um, poses a challenge as currently configured in that we worry that a, a bus uh, platform, our station platform, would hang out um, past the Third Avenue intersection. And so again, we're exploring uh, slimming that down or uh, potentially uh, closing that, uh, that access from Central. Access would of course remain from Spring Street uh, and I'll note that there is, um, we are very early in in our project and uh, a closure of Third Avenue uh, would, uh, would require additional coordination and um, a lot of um, discussion with the city, with MnDOT, and again with those property owners. Uh, I believe you asked about uh, potentially shifting the northbound platform to the far side. Um, the reason we uh, did not initially propose that is uh, because of this uh, slip lane here where someone traveling west on Spring Street can continue north onto Central. Uh, Central is a uh, MnDOT uh, roadway uh, and um, MnDOT uh, in our initial conversations uh, is not uh, was not interested in seeing uh, this right turn lane close. And absent um, a change at, at this uh, point here, uh, we don't think a, a platform would uh, would be able to be accommodated on that north leg. All right, so I am, I see um, a lot of written questions from Jared. Um, uh, Jared. Sorry, Nasser. I'm, Kind of, I, I see uh, uh, Dan had a question oh. um, early on. Do you want to um, address that? I, I did not see that. I missed that. Um, I'm just moving back. Oh, yes, I can see. Okay, 
I said, I'm, I'm, my, my apologies about that. This presentation has not mentioned that Central Avenue to downtown Minneapolis is on it is uh, AAA network. Why is there no mention of this when you will meet with the uh, Minneapolis Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee to discuss how the AAA network will be incorporated into this project? I think Stan for that question. Um, we we didn't mention uh, AAA uh, network in our presentation, but it is certainly something that we are thinking about as we are uh, proposing station locations and individual platforms. Uh, so as you as you note, the city of Minneapolis has a policy to um, encourage uh, all ages and abilities or AAA uh, bikeway facility. Uh, in a good portion of the F-Line corridor. Uh, MnDOT, through its Pell study, is looking at um, future alternatives along Central Avenue that could accommodate uh, a AAA bikeway uh, to align with the policy established um, uh, by the city of Minneapolis, and which is also, I mentioned, supported by Metropolitan Council policy uh, as well as state policy. Um, we are happy to meet with the Minneapolis Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee um, to discuss uh, incorporation of AAA network. Um, I will just note that, um, you know, we are operating here on MnDOT uh, roadways and Metro Transit uh, is not able to, to control or, or change those roadways. Of course, we have a close uh, collaboration and close partnership with MnDOT and um, are thinking about those AAA bikeways uh, at every step uh, as we are developing the platform locations, proposed platform locations. All right, so I will um, move on to the uh, next question and then call on Jared uh, Finkelson uh, to unmute himself and uh, Jared, please go ahead and unmute yourself. I know you have a number of questions and we will be more than happy to. Um, I know, uh, you know, people want to hear as well. So uh, go ahead and ask and mute yourself or I can go ahead and read him. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nasser. I did email a whole bunch of questions. I, for brevity, I won't necessarily ask all of them, but it sounds like you guys are going to try to reply to those in writing at least, so that would be cool. Um, yeah, as I said in my email, I am very excited about this, and if I'm critical, it's like it's because I just want it to be faster, more reliable, launched on time, you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I guess so. I put it in the chat, but I'm just kind of concerned, like that without dedicated lanes in some of these areas, it's just not going to be that big of an improvement and worth the time. Because, um, I mean, you could just remove half the stops on line 10. And I, as I, I know, I'm very knowledge about TSP is very limited, but MnDOT already prioritizes moving vehicles down central. So I guess I'm just looking for some direction about how big of an impact that's actually going to have. Do we need to have dedicated bus lanes to really see an improvement? Who is responsible for approving the bus lanes and kind of what the process is? And then just also my personal uh, would be much more convenient if the line, the, the route extended down to Lake Street and the Midtown Greenway. So. Thank you, Jared. And um, uh, you're correct. We we will provide written response to um, to all questions submitted here today, and uh, just confirming we did uh, receive those that you um, emailed and, and have already uh, started responding to them. Um, so the the F line project, uh, our goal is to increase the speed of uh, the service by about 20 percent. And um, we aim to do that through a, a variety of means. Um, as you said, 
the uh, number of instances where we're stopping and uh, the smaller number of stations uh, is part of that. Um, I'll also add that our um, stations are designed in a way that encourages less time spent at, um, uh, at a platform. So that is achieved through uh, the near level boarding or raised curbs so folks can get on and off more quickly. Uh, it's through advanced fare payment, uh, folks paying their fare at the station before they board. Um, and uh, additionally, the, um, uh, I apologize. Yeah, just maybe uh, you, you, you're cutting off. Maybe you uh, turn off your video. I think that would be better. OK. You, you're cutting off in, in and out. Just a few seconds. How about uh, now? It's good. OK, uh, I apologize for that. Um, uh, to a, a part of your question, you know, we, we are looking for opportunities for TSP throughout the corridor. Um, as you mentioned, the uh, a good portion of the corridor is already oriented, the signal time and oriented for north-south travel. Um, but there are plenty of other uh, treatments that we'll be exploring in order to um, still achieve additional improvements. Bus only lanes are a really important part of, um, we feel the success of, of the F line. Um, again, we are, we're in this position where Metro Transit is, you know, doesn't control uh, either the signals or the, the roadways. And so we have to work closely with our, our partners, in this case, MnDOT um, for, for lanes uh, to make sure that um, you know, areas that experience the greatest vehicle delay uh, are considered for bus only lanes. The uh, MnDOT's Highway 47 and Highway 65 Pell study, uh, again, is looking at uh, various alternatives inc that include um, uh, new bus only lanes uh, along certain segments of the corridor. So it's something we're definitely um, advocating for and and working with closely with our, our colleagues at MnDOT in hopes of uh, receiving that benefit and achieving our speed uh, and reliability goals. All right, so Jack, you're still there, right? I am. <laughs> um, so um, I think Jared, you're done with your questions. I, I will follow up as Jack said um, and respond in writing. Most of your questions uh, we already, as Jack already mentioned, started um, responding to those. Uh, so um, Connie has another uh, follow up, one uh, one more follow up question. Um, she said uh, one other question: Is the work begin beginning in 2026, or will will it be finished in 2026? Good question, Connie. So uh, construction would occur over 2025 and into 2026. The F line would open in 2026. Uh, another question. Um, so, how will the downtown uh, third and the second stop not disrupt bike lane? Yeah, that's uh, a good question. Let me pull up my screen here. So we have uh, proposed platforms on 3rd Avenue on either side of 2nd Street South. There are uh, existing on-street bike lanes uh, in either direction, and uh, F-Line platforms would be designed uh, to accept 
that existing uh, bike facility, have it pass through the uh, platform area, and then continue um, past the platform. So in, uh, in this northbound direction, the existing on-street bike facility uh, may end up sharing space with the area where uh, what we call a clear zone uh, in front of uh, the shelter uh, at this location. Right-of-way is uh, very constrained here and so um, throughout the engineering and design phase and in coordination with MnDOT and the city of Minneapolis, uh, we will be ensuring that that bike facility uh, can continue through, um, through the platform area uh, to ensure that that's still a, a high quality facility. Uh, in the southbound direction, we do have a little bit more space to play with. And so, um, of course, we are very early and not yet into uh, design, but a bikeway could uh, potentially go behind the shelter in this location and then continue uh, past uh, further south. Uh, I will just note that uh, globally, a global comment, um, all of the proposed platforms uh, will be designed to uh, accommodate existing bikeway facilities and um, any known future bikeway facilities uh, that might come out of um, might come out of the Pell study from MinBet. So just just a follow up, kind of a, a, a link to that question, Jake. Um, how would that not cause constant collisions between bikes and uh, bus riders? Are there examples of where this exists? So this is kind of follow up question um, regarding the yeah. Yep. Um, there are examples of this type of shared space uh, present today, and actually not too far. Um, I find it on Google Maps here. So this is something that um, Metro Transit is closely working with our agency partners to develop best practices for ensuring uh, safe operations for bicyclists, for uh, folks waiting for transit, for pedestrians, making sure that all those users um, can maintain you know, a level of safety and, and smooth operations when interacting uh, at a BRT station. So this is not an existing uh, BRT station. This is on Washington Avenue. We are looking, um, here I will zoom out. We're here on Washington, uh, kind of in between um, Marquette and Nicollet Mall. There is an existing uh, bus stop there today. And you'll see um, we have a sidewalk level bikeway along Washington Avenue uh, that continues in front of this uh, shelter. There are a few different design elements uh, that indicate that this here is shared space between bikes and say this uh, pedestrian who might, who will need uh, to walk out into that space in order to board a bus. Uh, we do that through paint, through some um, changes, some text, you know, changes in, in uh, surfaces on the street. Uh, and a few other uh, different considerations. We are, um, you know, this is still uh, relatively rare in Metro Transit's network. There are a handful of examples of this type of treatment, um, but not too many. And so as part of this, we are uh, evaluating um, the interactions between different users at locations such as this to make sure before um, uh, to make sure that you know the operations are safe before um, 
we pursue that elsewhere uh, throughout the network. So that was a, a you know a long-winded answer um, to a complicated question, but um, we are very aware of uh, maintaining uh, safety for those mixing users uh, in these areas of constrained right of way. All right. So we have another question. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind, of, kind of go back a little bit. Uh, both northbound stops for Central and the 14th, and Central and Lowry, both side next to uh, empty lots owned by the city of Minneapolis. Any con uh, quote, any coordination with the city to take more right of way? There's opportunity for wider sidewalks, uh, wayfinding, public art, etc. Yeah, that's a good question. So here we are at the proposed station at Lowry Avenue in Central. And uh, this lot here on the southeast corner uh, is owned by the city of Minneapolis. Uh, and there are um, there's been work over the years between the city of Minneapolis, Hennepin County and other community partners to think about the future of this parcel. Uh, among other reasons, we are citing our northbound platform uh, adjacent to this parcel uh, because we uh, think it'll provide a little bit more flexibility for us to accommodate the many different users uh, in this space in addition to a platform. Uh, so the answer is yes, we are coordinating um, with the city on, uh, on the development of this lot. Um, and may take advantage of the additional right of way uh, that is provided given that it is still undeveloped. Uh, a, similar, um, a similar situation is at uh, fourth, uh, excuse me, central and 14th, um, as you said, I'll scroll to that, where this uh, northeast corner property is owned by the city of Minneapolis. Um, and again, among other reasons, our northbound platform is located uh, at that corner uh, in order to potentially take advantage uh, of the city owning that property. I think that is all the question I have, but um, I, I think, you know, maybe Jake, you could talk about because uh, this this came up, uh, the extension uh, of the F line uh, farther south. Um, if there is discussion about that, or if there is any uh, future plan for that, or um, if you can, you know, talk about what is that work looks like with the city. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, address that. Uh, so during the network next uh, project which again resulted in the identification of the F line um, and took place over 2020 and 2021. During that uh, project, um, there's significant overlap between a Nicollet Avenue BRT corridor, which was analyzed, and the Nicollet Central modern streetcar uh, locally preferred alternative, um, which is along Nicollet Avenue uh, and that locally preferred alternative um, has been advanced by uh, the city of Minneapolis. The Nicollet Avenue corridor was not recommended for near-term uh, BRT implementation, um, given that overlap between the existing locally preferred alternative from the Nicollet Central modern streetcar. Uh, the Nicollet Avenue corridor does remain uh, a candidate for improvement, um, for BRT, potential BRT service uh, before uh, 2040. So uh, as noted in Network Next um, and in the draft corridor plan, um, we note that the city's plans for transit in the Nicollet Central corridor, as those advance, um, a potential different outcome could be, uh, could be reconsidered. And so those so those same plans about uh, Nicollet um, Nicollet Central Modern Streetcar are in place today, and as the city considers their next steps on Nicollet, given uh, new funding flexibility, 
that was achieved through the 2021 legislative session. Um, uh, we are again working closely with the city as they uh, consider those next steps. Uh, we have had communication uh, with the city about a possibility of this and what you know a future uh, high quality neighborhood based transit service would look like on Nicollet uh, and are working closely with uh, the city on their new Nicollet redevelopment, which is uh, reopening Nicollet Avenue at Lake Street. Um, and we're making sure that that project uh, is supportive of a potential future BRT on Nicollet. Um, through Network Next, the F line on Central from downtown um, Minneapolis to Northtown was named um, and adopted by the Metropolitan Council. And uh, that alignment was then amended uh, into the Council's transportation policy plan. Uh, that is our policy direction from the Metropolitan Council that we um, are following at this time. So as we advance the F line, um, there is nothing that uh, in our project scope that precludes the possibility of one day extending operations further south of downtown Minneapolis, uh, including on the Nicollet Avenue corridor. Um, uh, but you know, to put a, a finer point to it, we are uh, working with the city as uh, as they consider uh, their next steps and, and policy direction for transit service on Nicollet. All right. Um, so another question that came from Jared. Uh, is there any possibility to have a proof of concept or demonstrations? And I, I'm assuming Jake, uh, uh, maybe he's referring to, you know, um, without having all this improvement or, um, you know, alternative option, the easiest way, like, I, I don't know how you can answer that question, but. Yeah, um, Metro Transit does employ uh, pilot projects and has done so in the past um, to uh, evaluate the benefit of, of bus only lanes and uh, other improvements. And so that is a, a potential option. Um, uh, again, we are limited in what we as a single agency are able to do uh, that requires coordination with our agency partners in order to uh, achieve some of those things. Um, and some of it honestly comes down to, to timing. Um, we don't want to uh, construct anything that will need to be rebuilt, uh, particularly given uh, some of our funding sources and our um, some of the requ requirements that come with federal funding uh, from the Federal Transit Administration. So that could be a possibility, um, but it highly context uh, dependent. All right, uh, one more question. Uh, the south end nearly overlaps with the ne uh, with the north end of the orange line BRT or bus rapid transit. Could they just be contagious? Uh, currently, the F line project um, does not include, you know, extension uh, down to the, the Orange Line BRT corridor. Um, those two corridors, they are, um, you know, the the two ends uh, do meet up uh, or close to meeting up in downtown Minneapolis. Um, they do serve slightly different transit markets, um, and uh, as we build the F line, um, again, we we have some limitations with uh, our federal funding sources. And so um, I'll say right now, uh, there is no uh, plan to connect the F line and the orange line. But of, of course, we would look for opportunities to coordinate schedules and uh, transfer opportunities in order to do that. Um, one disadvantage of operating of, uh, you know, 
extending an F line or any uh, uh, transit line too far, uh, creating a line that is uh, very, very long, is it uh, results in, in unreliability um, and that can uh, sort of trickle down uh, across the rest of the line. And so we want to be careful about um, connecting uh, multiple routes into a, a single line or interconnecting or interlining routes uh, to make sure that we achieve our goals of, um, of reliability, which again is a really a main part of our arterial BRT projects, making sure that the service that's put out in the street is um, reliable and, and what folks uh, expect. I don't think I have any additional questions. So if anyone want to, um, I know we have a five more minutes. Um, if anyone, you know, have a burning question, uh, please go ahead and ask. Um, submit in the chat or we can meet and meet you and um, you can ask that way. In the meantime, I'm going to put a few links in the chat to our survey. Uh, and I think most folks have probably seen it, but I'm also going to put our project website uh, in the chat. That sound is good. Yes, yeah, see, you know, additional questions. I, I want to thank everyone for um, joining us tonight. And I also want to encourage you to um, spread the word and encourage your friends and neighbors, that people that you know that are interested in exploring the Metro F line um, or explore uh, the, the draft code plan in details. Send us your questions. If you have any questions, um, you know, you can send us uh, uh, this included in the presentation F line at metrotransit.org. That is the email that you can send us questions or you can call my number, which is 651, which is included in the presentation, 829-5305. Uh, uh, please go ahead, review the plan, submit your comments or questions, uh, complete the survey. Uh, we want to hear from more and more people and we definitely um, you will see me if you are a uh, Route 10 rider, you will see me at the bus stops uh, or you will see me uh, door knocking at the um, you know, station neighbors. Um, I've been out this uh, last week in engaging a lot of uh, properties that are right immediately next to the uh, uh, proposed station. So uh, you will see me, um, so a, a number of us out and about and uh, engaging riders and engaging the uh, communities along the route as well. And I appreciate your feedback and the comments and the thank you again. Uh, Jake, do you want to say um, anything in the last minute? Um, I would like to um, again repeat that, that thanks for everyone who submitted their questions and comments. I do see a couple um, have uh, come into the chat, and so I I will address those. Um, but I think we'll we'll call those the last um, last couple of questions here. Um, so why uh, Derek asks why no far side placement uh, for Central and Twenty Second. Pull that up. So the platform uh, here on the, the southbound platform uh, is located on the near side, on the north side of the intersection. And that's primarily due to this uh, existing driveway. Um, we would be unable to site a, a platform at this far side location without uh, blocking that driveway, which is something that we uh, try to avoid at all costs. Um, I will have to 
provide a written response on the northbound um, far side platform. Off the top of my head, I, I can't recall um, why uh, the far side is not proposed, but we can certainly um, follow up with a response to that. Um, and I'm just going to look here in the chat. I, uh, Tess noted that um, transfers are, uh, are a form of unreliability and add time and inconvenience as well. And that a lot of folks um, here today are, are talking about an extension beyond downtown. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge that yes, transfers um, you know, do add uh, another variable to folks trip. Um, and and I'd like to just acknowledge that we, you know, we are hearing uh, comments about a possible extension downtown and um, welcome those continued comments uh, and any other comments on the on the project itself. This is the the time, uh, the, the best time to um, share these thoughts uh, before we get into the engineering phase of the project. Uh, so I appreciate it. Uh, and with that, I think uh, that is our last questions. And um, again, thanks everyone for attending and we will follow up um, uh, in, the, in the coming days. Have a great night. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.